Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Thursday for February 18th, 2021. I'm your host, DM Galabond. Alright, today we're going to look at a spell that has a long history and has very interesting the way it has morphed over the additions in the game. The spell is Insect Plague. Now, you remember we looked uh, a little while ago at the spell Infestation, which is sort of a low-level spell, uh, but this is a much higher-level spell that sort of is on the same theme or on a similar theme. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what Insect Swarm is all about in D&D. All right, so... Uh, this spell first appeared in original edition D&D. It's a 5th level clerical spell. And the range is 480 feet. And the duration is one day. Now that sounds like a lot, but there are some serious limitations to this. Uh, the swarm has a 30 foot radius, so it's a 60 foot sphere of insects. You talk about the limitations, well here's the limitations. A uh, swarm obscures vision and drives off creatures of less than three hit dice. No saving throw. So, very effective against low-level creatures. Drives them away. But for higher creatures, uh, creatures that are greater than three hit dice, all it does is obscure their vision. Okay, now... The swarm can move up to 20 feet per round as directed by the cleric while it's within range. So it's very slow moving and it has to stay within 480 feet of the cleric. So that's another limitation. Now, it also requires concentration. And concentration works a little bit differently in original edition. So to con the caster must concentrate without moving. In original edition D&D, concentration meant you stand right where you are when you cast the spell. You don't move. And you cannot be disturbed. If the caster is disturbed, the insects will scatter and the spell ends. Now, later editions concentration if you take damage you've got to do a concentration check you don't get concentration checks in this one if somebody comes up to you and goes bleh, 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 they're disturbing you you lose concentration you don't get a say in that it just happens uh, so that's a serious limitation of uh, the spell in this edition looks impressive sounds impressive you get into the brass tacks oh, okay it's a little bit weak well, let's see how it morphed when it went to AD&D, or 1st edition. Range, 360 feet. So, a little bit down from the 480 it was before. Duration, one turn per level. So, 10 minutes per caster level, not a full day. Okay. Area of effect, 360 foot diameter. 60 foot high cloud. Okay, so it's a much bigger area. Uh, now you have material components. Nothing, there was no such thing as material components in original D&D. Uh, it, 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 sometimes it would say that you had to have something, but it really didn't specify uh, in the beginning. And as we saw with Insect Plague, it didn't say anything about having to have any material components. In this, in this edition, you have to have a few grains of sugar, some kernels of grain, and a smear of fat. The casting time is one turn, so it takes 10 minutes to cast this spell. Uh, so it's not something you're going to do in the middle of combat. Now, we'll let's take a look at what the effects are here and how those effects have changed. When the spell is cast by a cleric, horde of creeping, hopping, flying insects swarm in a thick cloud. They obscure vision, limiting it to 30 feet. So if you're in the cloud, you can only see 30 feet. Creatures that are within the insect plague sustain one hit point of damage for every melee round they remain in it due to the bites and stings of the insects, regardless of armor class. 
So, you know, that's because they're all kind of getting in the cracks in the armor and just crawling on your skin and biting and stinging. And all. Okay. Uh, referee, the DM, will cause creatures with fewer than five hit dice to check morale. Uh, so creatures with two or fewer hit dice automatically move at their fastest possible speed in a straight line in a random direction until they are not less than 240 feet distant from the cloud of insects. So basically that's an automatic fear effect for two hit dice or less creatures. Five hit dice or less creatures that fail that morale check, they will do the same thing. They'll run away as well. Uh, heavy smoke drives off the insects within the area of the smoke. Fire will also drive the insects away. Wall of fire and ring shape will keep the insect plague outside of its confines. A fireball will simply clear insects from the blast area for one turn. Lightning and cold or ice also will just keep the insects away for 10 minutes. Play glass for one turn for every level of experience of the cleric casting the spell. Thereafter, the insects will disperse. They swarm in an area which centers around a summoning point determined by the spell caster. That point can be up to 360 feet distant from the cleric. The, uh, so basically, a... 360 foot diameter that means that uh, you can send it 360 feet away so the farthest you will be from the edge of it is 180 feet uh, is what that basically means uh, plague does not move for as long as it lasts so you lose the ability to move it around now notice here it doesn't say anything about having to um, maintain control of it um, there is a way that you can counter the spell by casting dispel magic at the summoning point and a cube of force would keep insects away from a character seeking the center of the swarm uh, but invisibility would afford no protection uh, material components of the spell are a few grains of sugar some kernels of grain yeah all right so that's what happened in AD&D. Second edition, it's virtually identical to the first edition spell. Uh, range is 360 feet or 120 yards. The duration is a little bit less. It's uh, two rounds per level. The area of effect is 180 foot diameter by a 60 foot tall cloud. Um... Uh, same uh, material components and the same casting time of 10 minutes and the same limitations for the duration of the spell um, in the description. All right, now in uh, third edition, a little bit different. Casting time is one round, so now you can potentially do this in combat. Uh, cleric and druids get this at 5th level. Long range, 400 feet plus 40 feet per level. And the effect is it summons uh, one swarm of locusts for every three levels of the caster. And all of those swarms must be adjacent to each other. Uh, duration, one minute per level. You summon a number of swarms of locusts, one per three levels, maximum of six. Swarms must be summoned so that each one is adjacent to at least one other swarm. Uh, you may summon the locust swarms so that they share the area of other creatures. Each swarm attacks any creatures occupying its area. Swarms are stationary after being summoned and won't pursue creatures that flee. Uh, and then it says, oh yeah, see, for uh, insect swarm or for a locust swarm, you got to go see the monster manual. So we'll go to the monster manual. Locust Swarm. Diminutive Vermin. Uh, hit dice. 21 hit points. Initiative plus 4. Uh, speed. Don't worry about the speed because in this case they don't move. Uh, armor class is 18. And let's see a little bit about... Uh, third edition always has the greatest little descriptions here. A whirling, clacking cloud of voracious grasshopper-like insects flutters closer 
filling the air with a high-pitched buzz. Uh, a, a locust swarm surrounds and attacks any living prey it encounters. A swarm deals 2d6 points of damage to any creature whose space it occupies at the end of its move. And any living creature that begins its turn within a locust swarm in its space must succeed on a DC-12 fortitude save uh, or be nauseated for one round. The save DC is constitution-based. So it can deal 2d6 points per round of damage to somebody that stays in the area. However, each of these swarms only has 21 hit points. So if somebody that's in the area can deal 21 hit points, well, you effectively reduce one swarm of insects. And depending on how high level the caster is, they can summon up to six swarms and they can put them all in the same area. Uh, so you could get, if you wanted to, if you wanted to get one particular large uh, target, you could concentrate all of that in one area uh, because they have to be contiguous. They could be overlapping because uh, it says that swarms can occupy the area of other creatures, including another swarm. So you could put them all in one area there and concentrate it. Now, you can't move it, so you'd probably want to spread that out. So if something was trying to run away, uh, it would have to run through more area uh, and thus take more damage while it was in that area. So that is the third edition version of this spell. Now let's take a look at uh, fifth level, current edition. Or 5th edition, I should say, not 5th level. Uh, Insect Plague is a still a 5th level spell. One action, range is 300 feet. Uh, the uh, material component is exactly the same as it's been. Duration is 10 minutes with concentration. And swarming, biting locusts fill a 20-foot radius sphere. Uh, center on a point you choose. The sphere spreads around corners. Remains for the duration, and its area is lightly obscured. Sphere's area is difficult terrain. When the area appears, each creature in it must make a con saving throw. Takes 4d10 piercing damage on a failed save, half as much on a successful one. A uh, creature must also make the saving throw when it enters the sphere's area for the first time or ends its turn there. And higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of 6th level or higher, damage increases by 1d10 for every slot above 5th. So, uh, now it doesn't say anything about being able to move this sphere. So, that, I'm going to say that based on the fact that ever since 1st edition you haven't been able to move it, you probably aren't going to be able to move this. It's probably just stationary. Um, but you do get some decent damage out of it. And if you can uh, put it in an area where the, um, where the target of the spell is confined, all right, then you're going to be able to sustain that damage over time. All right, and that is going to do it for our discussion of Insect Plague. Uh, what edition of this spell do you like better? Uh, do you like the way the old rules were? Do you like the new rules? Uh, have you used this spell? Uh, what's the best use you've seen of this spell, whether you're a DM, whether you're a player? Uh, let, us, let me know down in the comments below. All right. Um... Oh, and then also 5th edition, more people have access to it. Uh, clerics, druids, sorcerers, uh, and, and with druids, it's certain circles. Circle of the land, desert, grassland, swamp, and uh, underdark. Nature domain and tempest domain. Uh, I, guess, I guess actually, actually, I guess what, that, what that's saying is that um, these guys, these people get it for, uh, as a, 
as one of those bonus spells for their um, for their circle. So uh, they wouldn't have to, you know, it would be considered part of their normal, um, I guess, part of their automatic spells spell list, I should say. All right. That's going to do it for our discussion. Everybody take care. Hope we'll see you back here next week. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, click the post notification bell so that you too can be notified every time new content drops on the channel. And in the description, you'll find out how to follow me on social media as well as how to, uh, as well as how to uh, go and uh, find all the live streams that I do over on my Twitch channel. All right, everyone, take care. Have a great week, and we will see you next time on Divine Thursday. Good night, everybody. Thank you.